Robert Salinas, and this is my final presentation for CMSE 802, and I'll be presenting over how one can produce exotic isotope yields with an automated lease plus plus. Now before talking about the work I did or the module, I'd like to discuss the current research group I'm in and the research that's being done by the group. Now I'd like to discuss the current research group I'm in, the NCL Lifetime Group. As the name suggests, the group looks at lifetime measurements of different exotic nuclei far from stability. Far from stability just means that we're looking at regions where we have rare proton to neutron ratios. And since we're looking at isotopes, we have more neutrons than we have protons. And this is done by using in beam gamma and particle spectroscopy. As I mentioned before, far from stability. Now, by looking at these unstable nuclei, we're probing, <coughs> we're probing this interesting phenomenon that occurs. And by probing this interesting phenomenon, we're studying nature, and this allows us to gain gain a better understanding of atomic nuclei. Also, I'd like to add that by looking at lifetime measurements of exotic nuclei between bound nuclear states, we're also looking at transition probabilities of bound nuclear states. Now, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, now we take a look at this chart here. Our x-axis is z, our proton number, the atomic number, and n being our y-axis, n being number of neutrons. And this chart here, which came from Wikipedia, just visualizes stability and how it begins to deviate from z equals n line whenever z begins to increase. Reasons like this is why one would like to look into different lifetime measurements of exotic nuclei, because why this happens is what one is after. Now, I'd like to discuss what Least Plus Plus is. Now, as stated on the Least Plus Plus website, the program Least Plus Plus has been developed to calculate the transmission and yields of fragments produced and collected in a spectrometer. Now, this is just a Monte Carlo simulation that is run either during an experiment or before an experiment to allow experimenters to either tune or look at what kind of yields you'll be getting. This is important because maintaining NSEL slash FRIB is very expensive and using BEAM is very valuable. Now, why would I want to automate this process? Well, if you're looking at one or two isotopes, it's no big deal. But it, let's say, for example, you're looking at seven, five, or ten different isotopes for an experiment and you're trying to see which beam line will give you the best yield or, or what kind of fragment you'll be getting the most out of. Now, that's a lot of clicking in Least++. Plus Plus. Also, one has, an, one has a rough idea of what kind of configuration you'll need. And by that, I mean what kind of parameters you'll need and how you have to set the parameters up. And going through every single parameter and every single combination can take a while, which is why I like to automate this whole process. I'd like to now show you the contents of the module. This slide contains all the files and folders that nuclear gamma tracking has, but the main two files we'll be looking at today are the implementation file.py and mainstart.py. Now looking at our mainstart.py file, here we have our argument parser, which takes in all the arguments from the command line, and we have our different starting functions, start and open. If least plus plus is not already opened, make sure to open least plus plus, and if start already open, if least plus plus is already open, just continue on doing what it should be doing. Then if we take a look at our implementation file, this file contains all the beam information which came from the NSEO website and all the functions that are required to run the script. So then these functions are also called by mainstart.py. Now to show you briefly how this runs, I'm going to go ahead and pull up terminal. With terminal open and a command typed in, now I'm going to go over different arguments that are required to be passed into the parser. If we look at our command, the first flag being the dash f flag indicating that it's the first time we're opening least plus plus. If least plus plus was already open, we type in nf indicating that it's not the first time that least plus plus is opened. The following two arguments, magnesium 34 and magnesium 35, are the beginning and ending isotopes respectively. I chose magnesium 34 and magnesium 35 just to illustrate as a simple example of how this runs, but currently it's only set up to run between magnesium 32 and magnesium 40. The following two arguments <coughs> are the beginning and ending range of the wedge thickness, and the last one being the momentum acceptance at the focal plane slit, and this is in millimeters. And let me mention that the wedge range is in microns. And the last flag being the dash V, indicating that we want a verbose output whenever we hit enter. So just to, just to hit enter now, so this should go to the icon and open up least plus plus. So we have our verbose output. 
click on Leaks Plus Plus, loading our configuration files, typing in NSEL, loading the spectrometer, A1900, setting our projectile. This is all being done without me having to touch anything, which is great because at this point, I can go <clears throat> and leave my computer or leave the computer this has been installed on and go talk to my advisor or go read another paper somewhere else or go have lunch or whatever I need to get done. So I'm gonna let this keep running just for a little bit just to show you all the different parameters that are required to be tuned and all the things you need to keep track of. And one can quickly see that this can become very tedious and one, can, one is prone to forget things. So at this point, I'm gonna fade away and I'll be back whenever it's done. seems now that it is done running. So let's go take a look at the output files. So this is what terminal looks like after it's done running. So it gives me my two outputs, my two different isotopes. So then it tells me it took 10 minutes to run everything. Now, if it took the computer 10 minutes to run, imagine how long it will take in a single individual who has to do all the clicking. So now to go into my directory where I'll my files are so it's telling me my files are saved in a folder called data files so let's see if that's there it sure is cd, CD directory cd data files alrighty see what that looks like sweet so it's two dot csv files which is exactly what i wanted now but we're going to open those two csv files so let me go ahead and open those up And our output looks like this. Alright, but usually this will be done with a bunch of different configuration files. So this would be a, a very filled Excel sheet. And one would have to visually inspect the purity and momentum acceptance and wedge thickness. And see which one works best. So that's great. So we have one for magnesium 35 and then we have another one for magnesium 34. Should be very similar but different. So opening up magnesium 34. We do have very similar things, and we see the purity is changing for different um, isotopes. So we had 70% purity with a wedge thickness of, excuse me, with a target thickness of 3,022 microns and a wedge thickness of 2,300 microns. And then 77% purity, which is a drastic increase from the previous one. Great, so that works. So let's not save that, and let's not save this. Get rid of this. And then I'll show you the rest of the PowerPoint presentation. Now, starting from this slide. <clears throat> so, what's the, for example, something I've done before is I've compared FRIB and NSEL outputs for magnesium 32 and magnesium 40. And of course, one can see that FRIB is significantly much higher than, or the intensity for FRIB is significantly much higher than the one for NSEL. And FRIB is going to go online in 2022 which is in two years, which is enough time for get, to get me to um, try putting all the isotopes that I need to get this ready for FRIM. So what is next? So the next thing I'd like to talk about is expanding expanding this to use all the nuclides that Least Plus Plus offers, which are, which are on the nuclear chart. Include the FRIM configuration, which the FRIM, FRIM configuration would include a whole lot of other parameters, which will require a lot more functions. And I'd like to present this to the NSEO Lifetime Group as a readily available module they can just download. And there's another project I'm thinking of working on, which deals with machine learning and nuclear gamma tracking, which was the original project this is going to be. But due to time constraints, I had to work on this. It's still a good project, though. So thank you for listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at frib.msu.edu. Thank you.